Ah, not the type of coffee that I prefer. It is Coles Express. It's literally just a service station one and uh, does the job. Let's get into it. So today I thought we would do a little bit of a different video and do a what's in my camera car video. Today we've got a bit of a corporate gig that we're going to. The car isn't as full as it normally is with my TVCs and uh, I'm kind of halfway through the uh, the day and unfortunately I've got the FX6 literally just sitting in this middle part while I go between uh, locations that I'm meant to be filming at. But uh, you can see a whole bunch of stuff in the background and I'm going to explain what I've got in this and then obviously what's in the camera bag as well. Let's get into it. What's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what's in my camera bag, but uh, not also what's in my camera bag, but what's also in my camera car. Yeah, um, this is the bag that I use predominantly for uh, bigger trips. I'm gonna explain why I use this. It's not sponsored. I actually did get this myself, the PGY Tech. Can't even remember what it's called. One go, one mo, one of those things. It's a, it's an awesome bag, and I'm going to show you why. But I also use uh, what is it? The Low Pro 350 AW Pro Tactic. I've had this one for quite some time, and I still use it. And uh, these two have different usages. This one is smaller than that one. This takes less, but this feels more comfortable for smaller trips and smaller amounts of gear. That feels more comfortable for larger trips and larger amount of gear. And over the last couple of months, I've had a large amount of gear and I'm going to explain why, get ready for it, why I have three cameras in here and also the camera that I'm filming on. So I would usually have four cameras in here. That's idiotic. Why would you do that? Let me explain. So I woke up one morning, incredible sleep, beautiful sunrise coming through the windows, waking me up pleasantly. Ah, so refreshed, ready to tackle the day. Went to the gym, got a coffee, made some breakfast, and went to my studio and opened up my computer. So one day I opened up my email and then I had Sony Australia contact me and said, hey, do you want to create some content for us for our Instagram? We'll pay you and we'll send you some gear so you can actually utilize for those videos. And then I thought, <clears throat> I'll see if I can fit it into my schedule. Thank you for contacting me. And now I have to send them all back, the end. So I have the Sony Alpha 1, which is an incredible hybrid camera, 8K video, 4K 120, 50 frames per second, stacked sensor, 30 frames per second in stills. Wow, the god of all cameras. I've got the all cute and mighty Sony ZV E10 for perfect for vlogging, smaller content, uh, content for Instagram, and uh, just an overall awesome vlogging camera. And, the Sony FX3. This is an incredible filmmaking camera, newly accepted by Netflix. So it's a Netflix approved camera. Wow, amazing. The firmware that just dropped in this is, it's an incredible camera. But uh, yeah, filming on the Sony a7 IV, my absolute favorite hybrid mirrorless camera for the price and for the image quality that you get out of it. But uh, we've also got the 70 to 200 OSS. You would have seen this video paired with the Sony FX3 and that's why these two are pretty much one of my favorite combinations when it comes to filmmaking. You guys have seen the review on this, the Tilt and Mirage matte box system. So this is how I keep my shutter speed twice my frame rate because I have a variable drop-in ND filter in this, but also I have the mist filter. And I always use a 1 8 mist filter for majority of my projects. Obviously there are some projects where I don't wanna have a mist filter. And the great thing about having a matte box is that you can block that unwanted flares and light coming into the sensor. Now, what else do we have here? I've actually been using this quite a lot. I don't know the model number of this, but this is the Sony vlogging handle. It's just a really comfortable handle and obviously spreads out like a tripod. So you can sit this on pretty much any surface and uh, I just really like it. It pairs with so many different cameras quite well. 
Let's talk about audio now. This is the one I haven't purchased, but this is the ECM B10. I absolutely love this, and I just put my order down for the ECM B1M, which is the bigger and unfortunately more expensive version of this. And uh, I just, this is incredibly good because it fits on top of the Sony Hot Shoes, which is a multi-interface shoe. So there's no cords. You can put this on auto leveling. It does the, it does the leveling really well. And I'm very surprised how good this actually performs. Noise canceling, eh. So, so, but uh, maybe I should do a review. Now, if I wanted to do some on the go stuff and small compact wireless stuff, this one is the X Vive U6. Pretty interesting. Uh, the review will hopefully drop on this one, but uh, it's not bad. I really like it. But let's talk about what's in my car because as a YouTuber slash content creator, freelancer, filmmaker, whatever you wanna call myself, I do a few local things and uh, they, some of them are TVCs, small television commercials, Kickstarter commercials, those kind of things. And that doesn't just require a camera and a, a, a lens or a microphone. That requires a ton of gripping equipment, a ton of gaffing equipment. So we're talking three or four different lights, we're talking three or four different light stands, C stands, uh, diffusers, uh, a whole bunch of modifiers for lights, a whole bunch of gripping equipment. It can be quite overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff that I need to fit in and it really depends on the job. It's a job to job basis is what will actually fit in my car and what will fit in my camera bag. So we're gonna have to have a bit of a breakdown of what's inside this car and what I brought and sort of break down the situations that we're gonna be in today, but also the situations that we're in yesterday because I brought probably a little bit too much gear than I actually needed, but that is always good because you, you wanna bring as much as you can and not need it, but if you do actually need it and you didn't have it, that becomes an issue. Once I sort all that out, let's start with the basics of what camera I'm actually gonna be using to film the main stuff. Now today, I think it depends uh, when uh, the boss gets here, person who I'm working for or contracted to he's going to be telling me telling me exactly where I'm going to be what I need to do and that's going to decide what camera setup I'm actually going to need so at the moment we're stuck with the Sony FX6 and we've got the 24 to 105 f4 lens now I did have the 28 to 135 power zoom lens but the zoom just is not fast on that thing and I prefer to have a manual zoom control that's a much faster and uh, yeah, it just really depends how much space I'm working with and what the weather's gonna be like as well. But this gives me so many different options because I can attach XLR inputs with my audio and I tend to use the Sennheiser, I can't remember what it's called, but it's an XLR wireless microphone. This one, Sennheiser AVX, something and essentially this attaches into my uh, XLR input and then this is what the talent actually wears so this is the receiver put a, a lav mic into that super super quality audio when it comes to that backup audio zoom h1n this is just in case sit it on a table sit into someone's pocket throw a lav mic in there and uh, third case scenario is I've got my wireless uh, lav mic system X5 U6. So that's the third case audio situation, just in case. So this is pretty much the full build right here. This is the FX6 and I've left it completely built out, mainly for the fact that uh, you save a lot of time uh, not being able to build this thing out. If it's already built out, all you need to pull it out, put the monitor on and you're pretty much away to go. But uh, you can see, it's custom built that I've built, put a whole bunch of foam padding on the bottom, on the side, so if I am traveling around, it's not going to be breaking it or wrecking it. Got my monitor, port keys monitor, audio, audio, spare V-lock battery, but uh, completely built out. Map box is actually in my bag, but uh, it's completely built out, ready to run and gun. So right here, I've got the easy rig in there, just in case there is a bit of run and gun stuff and I need to attach the FX6 to it and it gets a little bit too heavy, Easy Rig is there also. This one is 
a uh, modifier diffuser for the 60B. So you can see the 60B right there and then right next to it will be the projector mount as well. Also got the Nanlite 300B right there. So this is going to be my key light as always. Really good key light, super strong, and it uh, can run off two V-mount batteries, which is really cool, especially when you are on location. Now, if I am without power, I've got a battery pack. So this can actually run a 600 watt light for just over an hour. So it could run that uh, 300B for, you know, two hours at 100%. So that is very, very handy to have this uh, battery pack. Now right here is just a modifier for the 300B, so I have a really nice softbox. It's a 120 centimeter softbox. Over here, I've got the 400 millimeter f2.8 GM lens that's gonna be incredible for this fast action sports. Now pretty basic, I've just got a 60 watt light that can run off a couple of NPF batteries two light stands and one C stand. C stand is just in case I need to boom over a microphone on the talent. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That'd be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit that bell notification so you can be notified when my next videos come out. Check these videos out because uh, I like these videos and I hope you like these videos because that always helps out my channel. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.